Good afternoon. This is Dr. Craig Stern of Proforma Pharmaceutical Consultants and ProData Analytics. I'm delighted to have a chance to talk to you. My apologies. We've been uh, offline for a couple of weeks as I've been traveling, and we're in and out of the office over the next couple of weeks and then traveling again. So my travel schedule always seems to get in the way, but I'm delighted to have a chance to talk to you. My staff brought to me uh, several issues that they wanted to talk about, but one had to deal with this whole issue of payment for insulin for diabetics, both type 1 as well as type 2, which is also the adult onset diabetes, and the issues with regard to cost of uh, drugs with regard to insulin. Clearly, this is a critical issue. Frequently, I'm talking about policy or about issues with regard to benefits and things like that. Uh, but I'm going to direct this conversation mostly to patients and to people that have to address this. So having said that, let me address the fact that while I'd love to uh, be able to say that there was a magic bullet to deal with this, there is no bad magic bullet. At the end of the day, the ultimate response here is therapeutic lifestyle changes, namely weight loss, uh, watching your diet, exercise, things like that. And while it's hard and I have have a personal uh, uh, experience with this, I can tell you that therapeutic lifestyle changes are hard to do. So no one is trying to demean this or minimize it or put it on a um, special uh, uh, kind of criteria. But at the end of the day, if you want to cut down on, on drug use, if you want to uh, cut down on cost, etc. Ultimately, that is the solution. There is no other magic bullet besides that, as hard as it is. Now, the other part of this is what do we deal with this whole issue of drug cost, and especially drug cost of insulins, which shouldn't be a problem. I mean, on the surface, and if you kind of give it the smell test, you'd say, well, insulin's been around a long time. Uh, there's been a host of insulins. Uh, human insulin came on board a long time ago. Uh, there's not a lot of new research and development. Clearly, there are drugs that are out there that are, are research and development. But just in general treatment using uh, insulins, human insulins, and, and long-acting, short-acting insulins, etc., um, there shouldn't be a lot of question about cost, and frequently there shouldn't be a lot of issues. And yet, costs have increased, and we've all looked at it and seen where effectively everybody is pointing the finger one way or the other that the manufacturers say they have to do it, but then there's an issue where they have to pay rebates to pharmacy benefit managers. Pharmacy benefit managers point the finger at, um, at manufacturers. Health plans are trying to determine either one, potentially pointing the finger at all. And so effectively we have this confusion because everybody is saying it's not my fault, but in effect it becomes everybody's fault. And in the world of transparency, which I have talked about before, it's terribly important that we all understand that transparency means that everybody is going to have to say, what does it cost me? What am I keeping? What are the issues that are involved to deal with it? So all of that sounds really good from a policy standpoint, but it doesn't really address what do I do about it. And so let me address some of the issues, fully understanding that there is no magic bullet to this about how it's supposed to be done. Well, number one is is that uh, pricing is dependent on the manufacturers, but it's also dependent on the physicians and what they prescribe. Now, with enormous influence, because I'm involved in it as well, but um, um, uh, prescribers and physicians, uh, uh, people who are prescribing these drugs, tend to use the newest, most recent drug, thinking that that's the best, and effectively um, push off the drugs that are ones that they've used in the past and that they feel that they um, that the newer ones are better. In reality, uh, many of these drugs are fine to be used by people. They were used by literally hundreds of thousands, millions of people in the past. Uh, and there may be problems to it, but those problems been, have been identified as things that we need to pay further attention to. For example, hypoglycemia, where people uh, tend to have a lowering of their blood sugar and therefore they have symptomatology for it and potentially in the elderly concerns about falling or other kinds of things like that. We don't want that. So we readjust and we 
deal with it where people take a bit higher dose. So we're willing to have a bit higher uh, dose and perhaps a little bit of hyperglycemia so we don't threaten the risk of that. So the first thing is, is that there are many options, and many of them are older options, that are cheaper. Now, that doesn't mean that they haven't increased the cost of those that has, but we are identifying that there are multiple options and that the newest ones necessarily may not be the best for everyone, especially when you take all things into consideration, including their care, including issues with regard to um, the affordability, issues with regard to whatever the risks are, etc. The second issue is that um, there are different options within each category, meaning uh, in the, and I won't get into each individual one because this isn't a commercial conversation and trying to push one drug or another. Frankly, in this regard, we're indifferent. But whether it's regular insulin or whether it's an intermediate acting insulin or a long acting insulin, the, uh, and there are other categories of them today, but at the end of the day, there are multiple options within that, and it is incumbent upon everybody to ask their provider, is this the most affordable option for me? Are there other options? Uh, can you help me in order to address options that perhaps are not quite as expensive, perhaps not as new, not as expensive, and that I have on a particular agreement? That's one issue. And by the way, different pharmacies who've been in competition constantly, so we may watch manufacturers and PBMs and health plans all point the finger that it's somebody else's problem. Retail pharmacy has been in this business a long time, and they're all in competition. So they've all had to address whether they have a higher or lower cost. And many of them have uh, competitive costs, whether it's um, in uh, usual and customary charges or whether it's contract charges about what they do. Now, let's take a look at benefits for a minute. Irregardless of all of the political conversation, leaving that aside about whether the Affordable Care Act is maintained, whether it's modified, whether it's uh, deleted, uh, the people who are doing that don't really understand what all the issues are, and so we have to address how are we going to implement it, irregardless of what has been done. And in that regard, every plan has um, their deductibles and their co-pays and their co-insurance for each of these drugs. So it's terribly dependent on us to, um, for each patient to take a look at all of their different uh, plan options and say, here are my drugs, here's my list of drugs, I compare it to uh, the drugs on the formulary, are they covered or are they not covered? If they're not covered, they're going to be more expensive, I'm going to have to pay for them out of pocket. If they are covered, What's the deductible? What's the coinsurance or the copay? So I know what I'm going to have to pay uh, uh, every time I come in. And you effectively lay them all out as if it were on a spreadsheet with uh, plan option one, two, three, four, whatever it is, and look to see what the different deductibles and coinsurances are. That also is terribly important. And whether the Affordable Care Act stays or is modified or is deleted, it will all go back to the health plan, and the health plan will still be that issue that we have to address with these deductibles and coinsurance. So that issue can't go away. It's one we have to address all the time, and I, I, I uh, uh, respectfully suggest that everybody should do that with all the drugs that they're on and identify. Clearly in that regard, in other drugs, whether it's hypertension or diabetes or hyperlipidemia, whatever you're looking is, is there a generic alternative so that I can get it? I know that there are arguments, many cases, where people are concerned about that. Clearly, Medicare has had some concerns with certain categories, uh, like anti-epileptics. But in general, uh, these are all approved by the FDA. There is uh, some interpatient variability with all of them. But um, in general, the vast majority of patients, beyond 85% of patients, get exactly the same benefits in brands versus generics, so it's worthwhile looking. Now, on the insulin side, there haven't been a lot. However, many of these have had some less expensive ones, whether it's regular insulin or NPH versus uh, some of the others in intermediate, etc. And when looks at all of the literature, forgetting all of this commercialization, but when looks at the literature, there are slight differences in some of the newer products versus the older. Some of the uh, issues with hypoglycemia 
uh, are true for an hour or two after, but when looked at through the period of the, um, of the uh, injection cycle, um, these uh, issues in general are de minimis or they go away. So it's worthwhile to know, and some of the, quote, older agents that were commonly used all the time are agents that can be used. They just have to be monitored and administered a little bit more carefully. The other issue is, is that if a person doesn't have much income, and in that regard, we're dealing with people who are above 135, 150% per, er, of the federal poverty level, and purely as a kind of rule of thumb, uh, the federal poverty level is somewhere around $11,000 per person per year. So you're looking at something around $11,000 that's the federal poverty level. Take half of that and add another five or $6,000 to it, and you're looking at about another $17,000 uh, per person per year. If you're in that range, or even in many cases, less than 200 or 250% below the federal poverty level, then um, the uh, uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers are required to have patient assistance programs. And it's absolutely necessary, if you're in that range, to be asking people, what are the rules? What can I do in order to get assistance? where the pharmaceutical manufacturers must provide the drug and must provide the drug free of charge to the individual who, meet, who uh, meets those requirements. Each manufacturer has different requirements for it. Some of the drugs are there, uh, but uh, frequently if we're dealing with insulin in those, we need to ask that question and see if there's an opportunity if we fit into that particular requirement. And finally is pharmacy competition. We've said that the pharmacies are in competition, irregardless of everybody else fighting it out. The pharmacies are in competition, and frequently it bears, it, it, it bears an important distinction for us to be calling and asking of, of uh, CVS and Walgreens, and uh, uh, soon Rite Aid will be part of Walgreens, but either way, uh, dealing with Costco and Walmart and all the rest of those, and ask the question, because many of them advertise that they're uh, di di dispensing the drug for cost plus a dollar or otherwise, and so at least we have some way of controlling it. If there are changes in the laws, then maybe we'll be able to deal with it from other countries at lower cost, but that's more of a policy legal issue than what we do here. Um, I know that we haven't solved everybody's problem, but we do need to bring these issues to the fore because irregardless of politics and party, we're still going to have to deal with these problems and how we go about addressing it. I'm delighted to have the chance to talk to you. Uh, we are going to try some other methods in the future and have uh, one of our um, staff pharmacists, uh, uh, Barry Paschal, to come and join us. It will be Dr. Stern and Dr. Paschal, and we'll try and do some back and forth in order to give some interesting kind of discussion. Uh, and please, as always, uh, dial up our uh, Rx InfoX, the uh, uh, www.propharmaconsultants.com. Rx InfoX, where we keep a constant view of what's going on in the marketplace, evidence-based medicine, analytics, and everything for it. If you have questions, we're always interested. And by the way, if anyone has another idea about how they can control costs on insulin, feel free to send it to us, and we'd love to hear from you, and we promise we'll let everybody else uh, hear that, uh, because this is a running argument, and anybody who has a good idea is certainly one who is as good as everybody else. Have an outstanding day, an outstanding week, and I'll look forward to talking to you next week.